Okay. Can y'all see it? Good. Okay, awesome. So uh, just also to let you all know, this presentation and workshop is being recorded. Um, so if you don't wish to be on screen um, or have your voice recorded, go ahead and just put any questions or comments in the chat that you might have, uh, and we'll get to those. So you are attending the third SORC workshop uh, for the semester, which is the Leadership Practices Inventory. And we are putting it on uh, with LCSL, and we're super excited to have them here today. Uh, before we get started, though, we want to do a land acknowledgement. We think it's always very important um, to start our meetings uh, in spaces together with this statement. So I'll read this verbatim, and then we'll have a map at the, the next slide. Um, but the land acknowledgement um, is, there, is that to acknowledge the land that we are on. Uh, every community owes its existence and strength to the generations before them around the world who contributed to their hopes, dreams, and energy into making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will, some were drawn to migrate from their homes in hope of a better life, and some have lived on this land for more generations than could be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical in building mutual respect and connections across all barriers of heritage and difference. At the Student Organization Resource Center, we believe it is important to create dialogue to honor those that have been historically and systematically disenfranchised. So, we acknowledge the truth that is often buried. We are in the ancestral, ancestral lands that is, of the Piscataway people who are among the first in the Western Hemisphere. We are on indigenous lands that were stolen from the Piscataway people by European colonists. We pay respects to the Piscataway elders and ancestors. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us here today. Now, when we do this land acknowledgement, uh, we think it's, of course, important to do in person, but I think it's even more important to do uh, now that we're in a virtual setting, as not everyone is in College Park, Maryland. Um, and so we always include this um, land acknowledgement map, if you will. Um, and we can put the link in the chat below for you all to check out, but it's a great resource to use uh, in your student org meetings um, or any meetings for that matter, uh, where you're meeting with large groups of folks. Um, and just to see where you're at, you can zoom in all across the United States and see what indigenous folks uh, first occupied the land um, before colonization. And uh, we always like to pay tribute to that. So again, welcome. We are so glad to have you at our third workshop. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us. Uh, we started with the land acknowledgement. We're gonna go briefly into who and what is SORC, uh, and then we'll go through some workshop logistics, and then we'll uh, turn it over to LCSL. So who is SORC? Uh, my name is Nathan Grine, he, him, his pronouns. Uh, I'm the Graduate Assistant for Organization Development or Student Org Development. Uh, I'm a second year in the Student Affairs Master's Program here in Maryland. Uh, and then on the left is Foster McDaniel, who is the Coordinator for Student Org Development. And then our manager, Ashley Veneman, there in the middle um, for Student Org Development as well. So we are the three professional uh, staff folks we're in the office. Uh, you'll see us physically in the office or you can connect with us online. Um, and then we also have our student staff as well. So there you see our student staff in the um, top left photo. But where is SORC? We're in the Stamp Student Union. Um, and so we are on the ground floor in the student involvement suite there, that photo at the bottom. Um, we are open right now, so do come visit us. Um, you can come work on schoolwork, you can have meetings, uh, small group, uh, you know, meetup connections, and uh, we'd love to see you in the suite. And uh, if you don't feel comfortable, comfortable joining us, in the suite. Uh, we're lonely too, so come chat with us on our live chat feature. Uh, so if you go to the stamp website and go to the SORC tab, we do have a live chat feature where we would be happy to connect with you. Um, and we have folks staffing it during business hours. Um, and our business hours are up there on the screen, um, Monday through Friday, 8 to 8, and then Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 5. Those will be changing soon, uh, potentially depending on kind of what uh, guidance comes down from um, the administration, but uh, we encourage you to check out our hours on our website. Those will be up to date. Uh, and that live chat feature, check it out. Okay, let's see. What SORC does, 
uh, we do a number of things. So programming, we have our first and second look fair. We do developmental workshops like this. Uh, we do engaging programming. We help with Turf After Dark. We help with homecoming. Um, we do a bunch of different things and support offices around STAMP um, in programming for students. Uh, we also do some logistics. Uh, so room reservations, those are looking a little different this semester with COVID, but um, we help to reserve spaces. Uh, printing access also looks different this semester because we're not in person, uh, but we would usually have that. We have lockers management, which you'll be hearing more about um, in the upcoming days and weeks. Um, we also have our resource room if you would ever need it. And then we also have our budgeting arm, which is sort of finance. And so they help with motor pool, transportation requests, contracts, etc. And so if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out um, about finance. Be sure to connect with us uh, on our Instagram at Maryland Sork and find us at uh, stampumb.edu. And we also have a weekly newsletter that comes out. So subscribe to that. It's called The Word. It comes out. It has a bunch of good content in there about Terplink, which is our um, management platform for student orgs and database. Um, but it also has a bunch of other cool tips and tricks and a few good memes along the way, if I do say so myself. Also, shameless plug, we are hiring. Uh, so the application opened yesterday and it will close on December 2nd. So if you go to stamp.umd.edu slash uh, you can fill out an application and we would love to review your resume and uh, give you an interview. So make sure to check that out if you are looking for employment. Okay, to get into the workshop logistics, uh, as I said before, we are recording. Um, please meet yourself if you are not speaking, but feel free to ask questions along the way um, or put them in the chat and we will be monitoring that. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So to get us started, we have uh, Miles Alexander, who is our, oh, can I change? He's not our moderator, he's our facilitator today, um, but he is a program coordinator uh, with Marilyn Lead, and I'll let him take it over. So let me stop sharing real quick. There you go. It's all yours, Miles. Thank you for joining us. That was so like, so effective, so efficient. So just like, I was like, wow, yes, I love every bit of this. Hey everyone, um, just as my friend Nathan just introduced me as, my name is Miles, my pronouns are he, him, his, um, and I am from the Leadership Community Service Learning Office. And so let me go ahead and just share my screen real quick. Actually, hold on, pause, because there are some things I need to take care of first before we get there. Um, see, everybody's camera's off. And you know what? That's kind of fine, because I know it's the end of the day. Zoom fatigue is a real thing. So if that's being said, please think about how you're going to engage, because of course, we want this to be um, a kind of dialogue process, you know? Um, a group learning type of thing so it helps if everybody um, is contributing thoughts and so don't let that chat uh, option get too quiet over there but if you would like to just go ahead and do like a short introduction in the chat about who you are um, maybe just um, your major or your year list whatever you would like me to know about you uh, and maybe you just want me to know your name and your pronouns but before uh, we get too deep, let me go ahead and share my screen. But, uh, cool. All right. So, wait, I think it's still loading. I don't know what that bar is, y'all. Just know that I am not the most techn technologically, but I'm not even linguistically words. Anyway, so today we'll be talking about the five practices of exemplary leadership. And just know I had just learned how to say exemplary this year because I could not for the life of me for my 20 plus years of life. Anyway, ooh, perfect. So again, my name is Miles Alexander. I work as the Maryland Lead Coordinator within the Office of Leadership Community Service Learning. Um, you can follow the Maryland Lead Program on Instagram and Twitter at Maryland Lead Program. Um, we would love to have you. We post things um, from just what we're doing, as well as just different leadership topics that we talk about within our own kind of peer facilitation group. But also just a little bit about our program. And so if you didn't know, the Maryland Lead Program is a leadership, education, and development program. We do workshops, conferences, retreats, peer education, things like this as well. 
Um, some things you may know are our Terrapin Leadership Institute, which is our five week track program. Um, this year's theme, including next year as well, um, or semester, is social change. And so this year we went over the individual values of social change. And next year we'll be talking about um, group and community values of social change and Terrapin Leadership Institute. Um, we also do things like Mosaic, which is our identity and leadership retreat, which I'll talk about at the end of this presentation. But um, overall, we just teach skills on leadership and help people develop. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about our assumptions where it says socially responsible leadership as well. But that is us. And so, of course, like Nathan and I have just said, please send your questions in the chat. And I see some of y'all introducing yourselves. Hello, hello, hello. I'm not even going to try to pronounce people's names because I'm, you know, not even good with my own sometimes. I forget my own birthday. So, um, but hey, I see y'all in the chat. Hi. Oh, hey. Nice to meet y'all. So yeah, send questions in the chat. Um, and Nathan and or Foster will get those back to me. Cool. Oops. Yeah. So just an overview of what we're going to be doing today. So what we're going to be starting off with is just talking a little bit about what Marilyn Lee's assumptions of leadership are. So you get a little bit more of an idea of where we're coming from when we talk about leadership. We're gonna do a short reflection in the beginning before we get into the leadership practices inventory, which will be kind of like a self-assessment um, on the five practices of exemplary leadership. I just said that wrong again. <laughs> um, that we'll talk about after we do the inventory. And then I want us to have a little bit of a discussion about some of our results when we come back and kind of relaying those back to organizations or groups or communities, wherever it may be that we're a part of. Sounds great, sounds good. So about our leadership assumptions, um, these are just things that we believe. And so we believe that leadership is collaborative. We believe that it is the work of all of us and it is interdependent. Um, in our society, sometimes we tend to give um, more praise to individual leadership uh, or leaders and not necessarily recognizing the team that pulls that leaders or that person's vision together um, or whatnot, because it is all, it is the work of all of us. Without the team, a lot of things will not be able to get done. Um, and just recognizing that we really in life do not do anything alone. We always have help somewhere. Two, leadership is a process, not a position. Um, just understanding that a position does not make a leader, but the leader makes a position. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the second thing of understanding that leadership starts with the individual and their values. So knowing who you are, understanding your values and how those influence your actions and behaviors and your beliefs and why you choose to do the things that you do um, is inherently important. We also believe that leadership is inclusive and accessible to all people. Um, understanding that historically and culturally, leadership has only been seen through kind of one lens, um, where some people, some groups, some communities may have felt left out of leadership or the story of leadership. But understanding that leadership belongs to all of us um, and there's no one that cannot be considered a leader. And then last but not least, we believe that leadership is socially responsible um, and understands impact. So we don't just do things just for the sake of doing it, but we do things for the better good of society, or we do things in um, a process in which we're conscious of the way that whatever change we create, we're anticipating the impact and we're hoping that that impact is good um, and positive for whatever we're trying to do that. And so those are our assumptions. If you have questions about those, by all means, send those in the chat and we can come back to those and address some of those things too. But just want to start off by talking about what we believe. So moving on. Um, so what I talked about wanting to do a reflection. And so use the chat to send some of these, um, of these responses. It can be a summary, but if you also just want to take just like a piece of paper or um, open a notepad or um, type in your notes on your phone, whatever, just wherever you take notes. Um, and just reflect for a moment on when you feel or when you have felt uh, you were at your personal best. What were you doing? How did you feel? And why do you feel like in that moment you were successful? You know, um, and really honing in on what did you feel? Did you feel energized? Did you feel helpful? Did you feel successful? Um, who were you with? Were you with your organization? Were you with a group of friends? Or 
were you with a family or your um, place of worship? Um, where were you and why did you feel like that was a moment that you were at your personal best? And I'll go ahead and give y'all um, three to five minutes, um, but go ahead and reflect on that. And then kind of send us a little bit of like a sentence or two in the chat about when you felt like you were, the pers you were at your personal best. And I'm gonna sip and drink this chamomile tea. So enjoy that as well. <laughs> And then in the spirit of vulnerability, I will also share in a bit, but I'll let y'all um, process first before I share. Sometimes I wish in these moments I had like some background music. I probably should play some. I'll do it next time. There's also a dog here, so you may hear him. Um, he's a poodle and he's eight months, seven months, seven months going on eight. He's a terror, but he's sweet when he wants to be. It's a weird thing with him. I hope y'all can't hear me gulping. Like, that's a little weird. Let me take this mic off. All right, and so just to give a little example, I feel like when, I'll give a college example. Um, when I was an undergrad at a time that I felt like I was at my personal best, probably around my senior year, um, because I feel like I knew the campus, I feel like I knew everyone there, um, I knew where to go for what information and how to get things done. So I was very much like, information is one of those things that helped me. Um, and I really think I was involved with our university program council that I was there for three years. And in my third year, I was the vice president of membership, which was like my dream uh, leadership role or position. As I just said, leadership's not a position, but anyway. Um, but it was also one of the things that I knew, I felt like I was confident, I knew what I was doing, I knew my org members, I made time to like get to know all <laughs> 100 as best as I could. Um, but I really feel like that was one of the best times, or not best times, but one of the most um, times in college where I felt like I was at my personal best. Um, yeah, 
So I'm going to go over to the chat and see what y'all said. So I see some bubbles popping up. Someone said completing their homework on time. Yes. I think that was one thing that I didn't master until later in college. <laughs> time management um, is definitely a beautiful skill to have. Um, someone said they found an activity that felt good to them and made them feel energized. Uh, I didn't put honey, but usually I do put honey in my tea. I love that. Another person said they were doing linguistic research. Wow, oh wow. Felt that they were needed, that they were helpful. I know in my feeling, I feel like I felt like that too. I think those things feel, when you feel like you're contributing and like your contributions are helping, um, it definitely does make me feel good as well. Okay, cool. So if you're still thinking about it, go ahead, keep going. But right now, what I'm going to do is take a moment to talk about some things before we get into the inventory. And so this will be some more reflection to do, but on the inventory, three things to think about. There are also instructions that you'll see when you open it up as well, and I'll send, I'll send it within the chat for you to download. Um, and let me know if you are unable to download it and I can email you um, the, the packet. And so thinking about, well, one more <laughs> words. Number one, rate yourself according to how frequently you engage in that behavior. One being never or rarely. Five being, child, I do this thing all the time. Um, number two, consider how you engage in groups, communities, or organizations that you're a part of. So when you're reading these questions, think about when you were in those moments or when you're in that best moment. Um, who were you then and what were you embodying when you uh, are filling out some of these questions. And then number three, answer realistically and not how you would like to see yourself. Um, and I say that just, you know, really that's just a thing of like just being honest with yourself because sometimes I'll read something and it'll be like, oh, you're such a loving person. And I'm like, you know, I definitely feel like I am. Not saying I'm not, but um, also recognizing like how loving are you sometimes and kind of having that real moment with yourself of like, mm, maybe that's like a three. Um, or what, but anywho, I'll leave these up here, but I'm going to pause this real quick and I'm going to send this in the chat if it will let me. Oops, lost it. Where'd it go? Here we go. All right. So in the chat, I just sent um, the packet. Let me know if you're able to download it um, or if you are not able to, please send me your email and I can email it to you. When you open this, you're going to scroll down to like a couple pages. Also, let me open it while I'm sitting here talking uh, so that I know <laughs> where I'm guiding you. Do, do, do. So I believe this is on, so there's page one, two, three. I think it's on page three, but it starts off, it says at the top, it says student leadership practices inventory self, and you'll see a bunch of boxes and numbers. Um, and in those boxes, you can go ahead and put those numbers. Now, I'm just gonna warn you at the beginning that um, at the end, when you go to, to the third page of that assessment um, or the, two pages after you start or after you finish the assessment at the end, it's going to have some boxes that you can also place your numbers. You're going to place um, the score that you gave yourself in the corresponding box and you're going to add up those totals. And in those totals, that's what's going to give you your top um, exemplary practice. And so when you're done, this is gonna take you a little bit. So take about 10 minutes to fill that out. Um, and we'll come back together and kind of dis discuss some of our results as well as what do each of these things mean.
Yes, Brad, I can send this to you. Would have been smart, Miles, if you just had this already template and uh, ready to go, but you know, we live, we learn. Okay, accept it. And when you're done, go ahead and send your top results so I know when we can go ahead um, and move forward. But I'll check back in at about um, seven minutes to see where everybody is at. And know that as you kind of complete some of these, you may have some that, or two top results, so results that are tied. That's what I'm trying to say. Some people maybe just have one. Yeah, definitely. So someone asked um, how to tally up their scores. And so when you tally up your scores, um, when you go to sheet six, I believe it's page six, it has a sheet that has boxes um, or five different categories. And it's going to have, it's going to be a little bit <laughs> of some work. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but for example, it says model the way. Um, and so it says question one, you'll put your score that you gave yourself for question one, and then it says question six, 11, and so on. Um, and then there's a box at the end of that list where you can put your total.
All right, so I'll give everyone just two more minutes, two to three, um, and we'll go ahead and talk about some of these practices, but still um, send your top result in the chat when you finish. All right, so continue to add up and tally your things. I apologize if you have to like go back and forth between the thing. Um, I definitely did that myself. But just a little bit about the five practices. So the pra five practices is based on research by James Coos and Barry Posner, um, who are leadership researchers. And so they interviewed 10, more than 10,000 people um, about their leadership behaviors when they felt like they were at their quote unquote personal best. And so they identified five major themes of behaviors um, that you can see within uh, when you went and included some of your results. And so let's talk a little bit about what those behaviors entail. So the first one that we have is model the way. And so you may have heard this before in some way, but um, like leaders are the people that model the way that um, exemplify the behavior that they want people um, to kind of reflect. And so people who model the way have a philosophy or a set of standards. They stand up for their beliefs. Um, they're strong in their values. They show by example. That's what I was trying to say. Lead by example is something you may have heard a lot. Um, of how others should behave um, and maintain consistency within their words and actions. So they try to be congruent within their values and making sure that what they say is what they do and what they believe um, are all um, connected and consistent. And so if model of the way is something that you want to kind of grow in and kind of develop a little bit more, something that you can do is spending time about what is, spending time thinking about what is important to you. Um, what are the things that you value? Um, something that we do within MLEAD is we do value activities uh, where we get people thinking about what are the things that they do value um, and why do they value them and how do they feel that these show up in their kind of everyday actions. Um, being congruent in your actions and making sure that your actions reflect your values consistently. Um, something that I also do stress, <laughs> or not stress, but do tell people is that it can be tough 
um, to be congruent all the time. You know, life is constantly changing. We're constantly going to be put in new positions where, or situations where um, we're going to be challenged. And sometimes I reflect back on times where I may have not been so congruent and I'm like, Miles, who were you that day? Um, but knowing that when you take that time to reflect because, and that's important, because many people don't do that, they kind of just continue to go about it. Um, take the time to reflect and then kind of assess what can I do better next time um, is very, very important. And so also being confident in your values. Your values are your values. Um, and the more that you learn about them, the more that you learn who you are, um, it's a little bit easier to stay true to some of those things, especially when you investigate kind of the pros and the cons to some of your values as well. And if you have any questions about these, send these in the chat. And then at the end, we can kind of talk um, a little bit more about these. But we also have some discussion questions too. The next one is inspire a shared vision. And so I saw someone had this one. Um, and so people who inspire a shared vision look to the future to chart future paths that have not yet, 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 <laughs> yet existed. So you're constantly thinking about where is this road going to lead me? How are these actions going to lead to my success in the, in the future? Um, you passionately believe that people working together can make a difference. Um, and you're a person of possibilities. And so people who would like to develop this more may spend time thinking about the next month, year, five years, et cetera. Um, and just thinking about abstractly, what does it look like to you? Who do you want to be by that in that time? Or where do you see yourself, you know? Uh, where do you see your group? Where do you see your organization? Where do you see your team? Um, Talk with other people about how they aspire individually, find what they have in common and communicate that to others. People work together best when they have a shared vision or aspiration. Um, and I think that's, so, oh no, this is the one. Um, a shared vision is very much important in a team because when everyone is on the same page, it's easier to move um, together as a team or as a group or organization or whatnot. The second one is challenge the process. And so this was one that I scored high in, um, or was one of my top, I think I had two, but I remember this one being uh, my top one. But people who challenge the process um, are constantly testing their own abilities. They look for innovative ways to improve, sometimes to my detriment a little bit too much. <laughs> um, they take the first steps themselves um, and achieve big goals by planning small victories. And so, Challenging the process, if you want to develop this a little bit more, um, stop with the kind of same old, same old. But I wouldn't even say stop. I would kind of challenge that <laughs> plug um, to say investigate the same old, same old. Investigate what is working and what is not working um, and why is something working and why something didn't work. Always asking ourselves the tough questions um, and that overall assessment searching for opportunities by seeking innovative ways to change and grow and improve. Um, but be careful, I would advise with this one from my own experience of not changing too much too soon, because if you're constantly in change, then you really aren't focusing or honing in on what are the things that actually do work. Um, and refining what works is what I'm trying to say. Experiment, take risk, and constantly generate small wins, um, and be okay with failure and learn from your mistakes. The next one is enable others to act. And I saw some people with this one as well. And so people who um, enable others to act or score high in this typically may say, they may always say we, or they're typically very inclusive, foster mutual trust and respect amongst their team members and orgs or whatnot encourage ownership among all members. They want everyone to feel a part of the group, everyone to feel a part of the decision or the way that we move as an organization. They want win-win situations. So we want to make sure that we're collaborating so that everyone gets a little bit of what they want. Um, turn followers into leaders. And so empowering people to step up, um, encouraging autonomy um, and making connections amongst people is important. Um, and so for people who want to develop this a little bit more or just in general to develop this a little bit more, 
focus on collaboration rather than competition. And so competition can be, you know, great for innovation and uh, great for, you know, just moving forward. But at the same time, understand that uh, we are all in this together. And so really there's no who's better than what or what's better than who. It's all about how can we get everyone to just be the best version of themselves so that we can be the best group. Um, encourage trust, encourage uh, between, <laughs> trust between members um, and not kind of fueling drama or fueling tension and being conscious of that. Um, and rather turn towards strengthening others by sharing power and discretion. I'm very much big personally on, under, on the understanding that power can be shared. It doesn't have to be this thing that's just hold or held by one person. Um, it's not always about you. <laughs> it's about us as a team. As they say, leadership is about, it's not, or what do they say? It's, there's no I in team is what they're trying to say. Um, so yeah. And then I think this is the last one. Last one is encouraging the heart. And so when we say encouraging the heart, people who do this or score high in this recognize contributions to the common uh, vision. We look and see what everybody does, their individuality and what each person brings to the team. Um, we express pride in our team accomplishments. We look at what we do well uh, and we, you know, take what we don't with a grain of salt and we work on that and we move forward. We um, have high expectations, you know, we shoot for the moon and even if we don't make it, we land on the stars. Um, reinforce team spirit and we foster high quality interpersonal relationships. So making sure that we know one another, and we um, are connecting with one another. And so what can you do to encourage the heart Recognize others' contributions by showing appreciation for their individual excellence. Um, showing, recognizing what each person brings to the team um, and why their seat at the table matters. Um, enhancing the spirit of community within your group, fostering community within your group, fostering connection, um, and celebrating achievements, whether it be achievements of people within your group or achievements that we make as a group, um, all contribute to encouraging the heart. And so those are all the five exemplary practices of leadership. Um, and you can also, I will also send a handout at the end of these for people to kind of think about as well. Um, but I just wanna have a short discussion. You can send your questions in the chat or if you feel comfortable to do so, you can also unmute yourself. Um, but I wanna talk about some of the things. So for the first question that I have, and we'll take uh, some time to think about this and process, is which of the five practices come naturally to you, do you feel, and which would you like to develop more? I think I'm gonna, um, while y'all are thinking about that, I'll answer a bit too as well. I feel like for me personally, one thing that I would like to uh, develop more or in process of developing more is preparing other people, um, trusting people, um, basically enabling others to act, you know, not feeling like I have to do everything myself. I'm a very independent person. I get it from my family. Uh, but understanding the aspect of we are a team um, and really honoring people's ability to do a good job, you know, and being there as a resource when people need me. Someone said enabling others to act um, and inspiring shared vision comes naturally to them. Mm. Inspired shared vision, encouraging the heart.
And I think it's also important to say um, when we talk about these five practices um, that all of these can kind of be viewed as competencies. And so competencies kind of refers to um, a set of skills in order to be competent in the overall skill. Um, and understanding that sometimes you're going to be a little bit weaker in some of those things. But I think the beauty of a team um, is when you have other people on your team to kind of make up for some of your areas of improvement or your weaknesses. Um, it's always important. I think, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself when focusing too much on um, where you need to improve, you know. Your strengths are your strengths. You know, you can still improve, that's great. Um, but also kind of taking that and thinking about um, how you can have other people make up for those weaknesses. Someone said challenging the process is difficult. Um, yeah, step outside the box, yeah. And I think um, one thing that I know um, as somebody who scores high in challenge the process, I won't lie and say I haven't come up with like a barrier, come into a barrier where there's an organization or wherever I've been in a group where there's a heavy tradition and they're like, this is the way we do it. And it's like, but an outside, as me having outside eyes, I'm like, yeah, but there's also this or that and this that kind of is a barrier or problematic or whatnot. Um, and it can kind of be interesting to interesting process of getting people to see outside the box. Um, but that's why I like brainstorming and kind of doing strengths, weaknesses, analysis, or assessments, um, I think are helpful as a group. Um, model the way uh, your vision comes naturally. Cool. So for the next question, um, which behaviors do you see in your own organizations or group? And what would you like to see more of in those groups or organizations? So do you see a lot of people, um, like our organization is really good about challenging the process and being innovative, or our organization's really good about connecting and enabling um, or encouraging the heart um, what are some of those things that you see within your organizations and what are the things that you want to see more of? Mm. Wanting to see more good at challenging the process, wanting to see more enabling others to act. Is it fair to say, Miles, that sometimes folks challenge the process too much and aren't willing to act on the challenges that they propose? Is that fair to say sometimes? That, <laughs> yes. So people, I had a flashback. Um, so people who like to challenge but don't really like to offer solutions to um, that challenge or in that challenge, is that what you're um, talking about, Nathan? Yeah, yeah. Like in the, in that case, how can you, how can you, um, I guess, get them on board, or how can you get them to kind of motivate and and start to um, help give solutions or help act and and uh, get things rolling? Yeah, I think that's a good question, and I think it's as all many situations it it depends. But sometimes I'm a very blunt person, and I'm like, all right somebody presents a complaint i'm like so let's talk solutions then where where would we like to go from here as we kind of see that and maybe that's just like a intro question and we come back next time with solutions at a next meeting or whatnot um or we take time if we feel like it's something that is necessary as a group um or i don't want to say necessary but uh what is the word of high priority change um, so basically kind of recognizing what is the priority of this change that needs to happen. So is it something that needs to happen later 
or sometimes it can just be people are missing the memo, for lack of better words, um, and are kind of unaware of, we've been over this hurdle before and we tried this X, Y, Z. Um, so sometimes you have to do a little bit of labor in reminding people um, <laughs> we've already been there or something like that. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope that answered or not. I see. Now it has become popular challenging the process. Yeah, in a way. And in some ways, that's good. Um, I think, you know, in challenging the process, a risk is that there's going to be conflict, but conflict means that there's something that needs to be addressed. And so, you know, if we get past it, we're a little bit stronger. If we don't, then maybe there's something we need to assess as a group. And so for my last question, um, I have is how might social identity, power, and or environmental forces impact our, our ability to use the five practices? And what examples do you think of when you think of this question? As folks think about this question on the screen, I know uh, in the RSVP, some of y'all had said, you know, you want to learn how to be a more effective leader, especially in COVID. So I would challenge you all to think about like how your environment and those forces, especially around COVID and this virtual environment, um, how does that impact your leadership and how do you think you could pivot? So I kind of invite that little nuance there um, to think about. Absolutely. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and kind of going back to my challenging the process, um, I think when I think about this question, I think of spaces where people may not be comfortable to challenge the process, uh, where they may feel like they are not empowered to do so based on their social identities or whatnot. Um, so people who may be in spaces where there are people who hold more dominant um, or majority identities may feel, and those who have more marginalized identities in those spaces may feel that it may be more difficult to challenge the process. Um, and the power dynamics may play uh, a part in that as well. Whether they be conscious or unconscious. Trying to think of other examples while we're here. Um, I think of encouraging the heart during COVID, like keeping people motivated, keeping people going, um, I think can be difficult or, um, or might impact that five practice. I think even on top of that, like, giving grace, patience, understanding, right, um, as a leader, um, and, and showing mm -hmm. that compassion in this current environment, um, because folks might not have, and this goes to social identity, power, privilege, but um, they might not have access to like the fastest internet, right? Mm -hmm. Or they might not be able to join you for this meeting this evening because they have to work, um, mm -hmm. or they have to do something else, or, you know, so I think, um, being a leader and taking into account all of those factors um, and giving grace, um, especially during this COVID environment. Absolutely. And someone said it's, it can be difficult to inspire a shared vision, difficult to predict. Yeah, a lot of what is happening, and especially at the start of this, was unprecedented. Like, <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. No one knew what to do. Um, here, a lot of, I'm not going to get into that. but. Yeah, that, that is, uh, that's a good one. Okay, continue to think on that. Um, and before we close out, and I hope you don't leave before I send this handout, um, please let us know if you have any questions um, 
Uh, you can email me at miles, or not miles, malexan3 at umd.edu, or again, follow us at the Maryland Lead Program. Um, and then just a couple announcements. If you didn't know, we're doing our Mosaic series. And so our Mosaic series targets um, to talk about leadership, identity, um, and intersections between um, power, privilege, and oppression. And so this Thursday, November 12th, from 5.30 to 6.30, we'll be talking about privilege and leadership. And then next Thursday, at the same time, we'll be talking about what to do in face of what actions and in, in or what is action and inaction in face of oppressive behaviors. And then also, if you just want to learn a little bit more about leadership, we have our uh, Terrapin Leadership Institute that opens up next spring and registration opens in January. Um, and so I'm going to send this hand out. Let me pause the share. Oops. Also, credit to Slide any, Carnival. <laughs> are there any um, final questions for Miles about um, the leadership inventory, the um, it, like leading during, during a pandemic, um, leading during this current time, um, especially with events that have unfolded in the past week? Like, are there any other questions that you all might have for him before uh, we hop off? Miles, you're still trying to send that correct, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so there's like five people. Did you, did you have anything else you wanted to share with us this evening? Um, I do not. Also, Zoom does not make it accessible to find files. Um, so I apologize if you have to go and I'm trying to find this. We can always um, send you their emails. Um, Perfect. You can Let's do after. that. Yeah, <laughs> that works. But <laughs> thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us this evening. Hopefully, you're able to uh, take a lot away from from our our guest, Miles. And thank you, Miles, for joining us. We appreciate your expertise. And if you do have any questions, please reach out to him and. Uh, other than that, have a safe and healthy and happy rest of your week. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you.